I said, well, Bitcoin is the best crypto. I said, okay, what's the second best? There is no second best. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right? There's no second best, okay? But take all your money, buy Bitcoin. Then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. Then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth. So I was right. I took a rash of shit for two years, but I was right and everyone was wrong. And yeah, I got a bonus check for it. Sue me. You know, it's a lot of money. I get it. I can feel you judging me. That's palpable. But hey, I never said I was the hero of this story. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night here from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you all are doing well and having a good day wherever you may be. We are here with the uh, Moon Gung, uh, episode number 69420, is now the best time to buy your crypto? The answer is uh, this week, uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's the show. Um, we are done. See you guys later. But um, no. Um Basically, uh, we weren't able to do Moon Gang yesterday. Um, Miguel has uh, some guests in town, so basically, um, we're gonna let him uh, be with his family and all that. But uh, uh, we got uh, price action here today, which is very, very nice. And um, basically, that uh, at, and as uh, Mr. Angry Twinkie would say, is a uh, nice suit, <laughs> right? If you want to throw a Japanese accent on it, but um, yeah. Um, the price action is really, really good today. And basically, in my opinion, uh, it gives us the second of three confirmations that our 60 day cycle low is in, which to me is enough to get money into the market. Um, and so we're going to be discussing like uh, what that means, kind of how the market's developing here today uh, and um, how much time possibly, right, do we have to make some more money here because uh, Bitcoin has gone up for uh, I believe seven months in a row now. We're gonna take a look at the monthly chart here in a bit just to make sure. But yeah, I think that's either the first time that's ever happened in Bitcoin's history or maybe the second or third, but uh, it doesn't happen too often. But there's a lot of people that are saying like, hey, you know, are we uh, going too high too fast? Is this just gonna be kind of like the nature of, of this uh, current four year cycle? Right now, I'd give it like a 60 to 70% chance that just the the price is about ten to twenty thousand dollars on bitcoin higher than what it probably should be at that point in the cycle seems to be what's going to play out unless uh we get something kind of messing with the election here and uh my theory on that essentially is that there's not really going to be any major geopolitical upsets at least originating from the united states um before the u.s election um and that's either overtly or covertly, however you want to take that, right? But um, yeah, not, none of those actions basically stirring up the pot um, until after the election, most likely, unless it's uh, before the six months prior to the election. So the election happens in November. Uh, so that uh, basically brings us to May um, as the time six months prior to the election where, you know, some global uh, black swan fuckery basically can happen, right? And so um, I, and that's of course a theory, right? Take it for what you will. But, um, I believe that if we're kind of clear, uh, from that regard from June, then this market starts to get hot. So if you think Bitcoin here at $70,000 is high, if you think that your altcoins that are doing well, um, right now are starting to pump and, and are kind of high, um, come back in about a month and, uh, see where we're at. Right. 
and then come back in July and see where we're at again. I think we're going to make higher lows into that period. So, you know, I see people in the different chats making jokes about like, um, what do you call it? Um, what do you, uh, what was the thing I was going to say? Um, yeah, basically jokes about, oh yeah, I only buy green candles and I only buy uh, tops and sell lows and stuff like that. Um, at this point, the bull market, uh, the current 60 day cycle, we're still in the dip, technically speaking. And it does seem like we're pretty much just going up and to the right uh, more than not throughout the course of this year. So uh, we did say uh, many times over the last six to nine months, basically telling you guys, hey, we're pretty much at a you know stroll or walking pace um, about six months prior to the Bitcoin having. You can buy whatever coins you like. Um, you could just kind of just, you know, uh, dollar cost average in, take your sweet old time and you're good. The closer we get to the having, the closer we'll get to a, I don't know, light jog to starting to, you know, uh, catch a sweat or something like that. Um, that's where we're at now, right? And so everybody coming into the market has to kind of go a little bit faster, a little bit higher risk, a little bit higher prices than probably what most people would like, um, especially since we're at new all-time highs on Bitcoin. But we still have coins that are lagging the market like Alluvium, which I think is pretty much one of the best deals in the market right now. But um yeah i think people just kind of have to get used to kind of um price going up it's been so long that uh you know crypto was in you know uh, a bear market or just starting the accumulation phase of a bull market that i think a lot of people forgot what a bull market is going to be like and so um an i guess another theory here going into uh this cycle I do believe that we get new all-time highs going into 2025, either between March to October of 2025. But I think the thing that might be really interesting, and I've said this portion before, which is we could get a double top where we uh, kind of like 2013 Bitcoin, where uh, at the, I think at that time, uh, we can take a look at it later, but you went up something like, you know, to $500 or $600, crashed down uh, to basically 100, what then went up to 1,000 or 1,200 and then crash down in the bear market back to 100 or 200, um, roughly. Uh, so something like that, where we jump up from uh, where we're at now to the end of the year, uh, let's say November at $140,000 Bitcoin, create a top, come back down, kind of like the summer of 2021, 20, uh, but probably more brutal, uh, meaning like a 50% correction or something like that, da back down to where we're at now. And then one more time to the upside uh, from that spring of 25 to uh, either summer or fall of 25, where we could hit then new all-time highs on Bitcoin at like 180,000. You're going to hear Wall Street basically chanting for 200,000, 225, 250,000, a million dollar Bitcoin, shit like that, right? Um, and then that's your signal to sell uh, as soon as Vanguard approves uh, the Bitcoin ETF, right? And stuff like that. Or, uh, you know, lots of different uh, things can happen that will basically kind of show us that highs are in. So, um, yeah, we, we also said, you know, uh, buy your bags before the end of June or prior to June, ideally. Um, so yeah, we're kind of getting pretty close to that. So, uh, is now, uh, the t best time to buy your crypto. I think this week, uh, is pretty much your best time to be buying. Um, do we revisit the same prices? prior to a, a real run up in the summer is kind of the question. Um, so I would say in May, we could get, uh, or may, let's say late May, June, we could get to the same prices we're at now, mostly on Bitcoin, probably not as much on the altcoins unless they've already run too far. Um, so yeah, um, that's just something to look for here just in the next couple of months is, you know, if you're not done buying, if you haven't got as many coins as you want, uh, now is the time to basically start putting it uh, a little bit in overdrive um, or at least speeding up. So let's see here. Um, ba -ba 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 -boom. Uh, Alan says 80K Bitcoin by May. I think it seems very, very likely at this point. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> Tony S. Bullish as hell. Uh, hell yeah, I like the sound of that. Uh, me as well. And um, I think, you know, the third part of that, I guess, that I hadn't really mentioned that much before is just um, 
can Bitcoin stay at a higher price for longer is really the question. And I think a lot of people are like, well, if you kind of push Bitcoin's price up too far too fast, then you're going to get a big dip. And I think that is true. But I think that's going to happen a lot later than most people expect. So people will be like, oh, it's not going to keep going up. Oh, it's not going to keep going up. Oh, it's not going to keep going up. And then, you know, price gets too high. They buy that first macro top. And then, yeah, when we go down. Um, and um, I think uh, before that and after that, though, Bitcoin can probably ride one standard deviation higher than it did in the last bull cycle. So anybody who might look at different indicators on on-chain data that we've looked at on the show, uh, a lot of those indicators have multiple standard deviations away from some sort of moving average. Um, and so each bull cycle, we've actually gone down by one deviation in terms of volatility, Bitcoin becoming a little bit less volatile over time. Um, but I think this bull cycle we might actually get um, because of all the ETFs and all the new money coming into crypto, we might just get that uh, extra bullishness that we have in this cycle. And that might lead into the next bull market as well after We'll see how the bear market is. But anyways, um, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But uh, again, now is the time to be buying. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, Rainier uh, with 199 Super Chat says, Hey, CC, what hard uh, wallet would you recommend? Uh, the Trezor, T-R-E-Z-O-R, Model T. Um, that one's pretty damn good, reasonably priced. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend that one the most. Let's see. What is going on today in the chat? Oops. Uh, this one here. Uh, Salah says, uh, what coins do you recommend since many of the coins you talked about before have run quite a bit? Um, ILV, Alluvium, right? Alluvium has not run yet. Alluvium uh, has some pretty bullish stuff going on. I'll have to pull up a th uh, Kieran's uh, Twitter here today. We can take a look at that. Um, and I think, um, yeah, it's going to go quite well um, for Alluvium. It's at 140 right now. I think it'll go towards 250 at least, up to 450 to 650. Um, so we'll see how high you can go over the course of the next one month first. Mm, good question. Gray man says, how much of a dip would you think if the election is a serious shitstorm? Well, we know the election is going to be a serious shitstorm. There's no doubt about that. So <laughs> I would say take that into consideration, right? So since we know politics in America is kind of getting close to idiocracy, or at least we have, um, what do you call it? Weekend of Bernie's in the White House, right? So um, yeah, it, it's going to be crazy. And of course, the country is probably more divided politically than ever. At least the media, media makes it seem that way. I think people, you know, feed into that and buy that bullshit quite uh, in heavy doses, especially since uh, 2020, 2021. But anyways, I would say um, prepare for it. that's probably the most likely post-election, you know, kind of hangover, just being like, OK, markets pumped into that. Great. Nancy got her money um, and uh, she doesn't care about the change of administration. Maybe I don't know. Uh, she's made out like a bandit. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, be ready for them to sell high. It's actually not a bad question here. Stephen Robinson said, uh, says, uh, did Sam Bankman Fried get in the way of Bitcoin not hitting 100K the last bull market? It's possible. I know for a fact that uh, he had a hand in the Bitcoin bottom, actually. So you got to kind of thank Sam Bankman-Fried for getting you $15,500 Bitcoin because Bitcoin probably was going to bottom if I was, uh, I have to pull up, I would take a look here at the chart, but uh, let's see. Yeah, basically it looked like Bitcoin was going to try to bottom somewhere around $17,000, $18,000 at the time. Um, but Sam Bankman-Fried was getting freaking desperate um, to save um Alameda Capital and uh, FTX, right? And so he thought he could push the market in the direction. And so he's like, we're in a bear market, so I'm going to push it down. He did. He created the low and created the bottom and the opportunity for everybody else to buy coins of his cold dead hands and for the bull market to commence. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know if we thank him for his service, but uh, we appreciate the donation, right? Uh, hopefully you guys, some of you guys scoop that up. We will do that tomorrow, so no worries. Uh, but the coin list itself, you guys, I mean, there's a whole webinar 
going through the entire coin list. Uh, the price points on the coin list, basically uh, we had to change those massively because the market pumped so much uh, during the course. So it's kind of like chasing a dragon on that. It's really just buy now on the coins that you like from that list. I mean, we went very thoroughly through each coin um, on the webinar, basic uh, that, what do you call it, um, into detail of what they are. So um, hopefully you guys have done some research on them as well. Um, Aaron says the Alluvium Arena patch was released 13 hours ago, looking very bullish. Kieran said he wants four weeks of testing before going. we go live. Um, perfect. So GameFi is uh, getting getting saucy. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, nice. We got Canned saying my first big profits have been these past few months. I'm up over, looks like, uh, was that $10,000 in Phantom alone. Beautiful, sir. Um, love to hear it. Oh, yeah, I did forget, right? Could probably go to the top. Ah, oh, is it only here? I don't think I can see the number one moon gear, gear anymore. It was. I do not know. Oh, I think it was Flynn Rider, actually, today. I can't uh, I can't go back and see the uh, uh, thing because the chat is too active today. But, um, yeah, good stuff. And I guess from the earlier time, Marvis Journey said, Crackhead gang, we up. Exactly. So um, let's jump into the memes here, and then we'll get into some more data of what uh, why right now is a very good time to be buying. Dude, if this happens, I'll be pissed. US uh, Crypto Boogie says, SBF will get a bar pardon by Joe Biden before he leaves the White House. That would be terrible, insane. But I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Crypto Freak says, if we get a single top uh, for Bitcoin between September to November, and if Pulse slowly starts moving up from August, do you think we can still make a 5 or 10x on Pulse? Yeah, I'm not really worried about Pulse um, that much once it gets moving like if you watch Hex's chart from the last bull market for Ethereum Hex, um, once it gets moving, it can go uh, a double on a double on a double, right? Uh, so uh, Richard Hart's famous phrase is you could have sold on a 2X on a 2X on a 2X, right? So um, price will go up nicely. So I think a lot of people, you know, um, will kind of be surprised. You know, it does take uh, altcoins quite a long time to break up, but once they do, uh, prices go kind of insane. I mean, we've already seen that over the course of last year with a lot of coins. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into the memes. And uh, <laughs> got some decent memes here today. Uh, so let's do it. And oh, I probably should pull up two things here. Let's go here. We are live. Okay, we got that. And then what was the other thing I wanted to pull up there? Oh, right. Oldie but a goodie. YouTube's really been screwing with us on the back end because uh, you're supposed to have like all the monetization on if you basically want the algo to uh, push your channel. Um, but then they like limited a few of the ones because we did too many memes, uh, which is annoying as hell. Um, they got a sense, kind of sense of the memes. Too much copyright infringement. <laughs> All right. Uh, where should we start? Okay, that's a good way to put place to put it. Let's give let's give that a shot. All right, let's do it. Um, what's your price prediction for Bitcoin by December of twenty twenty four? Over a hundred thousand dollars, up to one hundred and forty. Okay. Free coming for the free sauce. All right, let's get into the memes. I think I shared sound issue, so we should be good there. All right. So <laughs> we showed you guys this meme all of last week. I think it still uh, is, uh, you know, basically relevant. Uh, don't minimize risk. Maximize opportunity. This is the fortune cookie uh, that has spoken received it today 
<laughs> and then uh, checking the market this morning. Ooh, spicy. Looking good, looking good, looking good. And uh, so now that we know the market is uh, getting even better and it's time to buy, you know, save your fellow plebs and uh, tell them to either buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum, buy Alluvium, buy Solana, buy Phantom, whatever it is that they think has the best narrative for them to feel warm and snugly when they go to sleep tonight. Uh, just get them to buy some coins if you know if they know what's good for themselves. So, uh, meanwhile, we have Shift Gold here trying to sell some uh, stable coins, uh, but let's take a watch. Everybody! Right. <laughs> All we need in this meme at the very end, if I'm going to adjust it, is we need like BlackRock as Thanos, the only thing slowing down and speeding up hyper adoption at the same time, but trying to save your uh, your uh, fragile government from collapsing, or at least the fiat dollar, because we know all fiat currency has gone to zero uh, in human history. But that's where why we get volatility, because as we print dollars, we uh, increase the volatility, which only makes Bitcoin better, more valuable, more powerful in the world. So if you don't want to be this guy going through your first dip, maybe that was the last one week. I don't know. But, uh, you know, try to learn from the hodlers and not the, uh, what do you call it, day traders here. Seriously, Twitter, you fucking with this? No way. What the hell? Maybe I just refresh it and just let it play. Nope. Twitter doesn't like this meme today. So I guess <laughs> the confusion on her face. Uh, maybe we'll move on. I swear to God, like no way that's going to, if that happens to the other meme, I'm going to be pissed. Um, but anyways, uh, the time is nigh 
And uh, we have me down five Solana trying to outbid sniper bots using radium. Meanwhile, the Bitcoin having coming up. <laughs> uh, be careful out there. Don't use leverage. This is your crypto wallet versus your bank account. Make sure to keep stacking. And I'll take that one off. Uh, also, talking about, you know, differences in wallets here. We also got the time here of Bitcoin in 2022. Some random French, uh, what do you call it? Uh, for weather forecaster versus Bitcoin in 2024. Things looking a lot better. <laughs> oh, this is kind of funny. Um, we got our future president of the United States uh, in the year 1967. But uh, this is also, uh, if we're looking at current age, six-year frat boy about to invest his life savings in internet currency. Same guy, but uh, different time. <laughs> also got that vape. <laughs> All right. Best Pulse Chain meme of the year. You better not fail me. Jesus. There's no way. Twitter, or not Twitter, but... um. YouTube must, must really hate the memes. All right, let's do this. Meme abort. Meme abort. Uh, we are live. Uh, let me try one thing. Let's see if this helps anything. Which one are we good? There we go. Boom. If I have to cut out all video memes, um, that's really annoying. Half of the best memes of the video memes. How did, how did, oh, I guess maybe it's just Twitter fucking up because like, how did uh, the internet not fuck up that last meme? And of course, as soon as I say that, then it starts working. All right. Maybe it's because I was sharing screen. God only knows, but we do it live. <laughs> I need that fucking clip for a, uh, a meme to put on the intro. Shit's funny. Um, all right. Let's try that again. The internet's got a case of the Mondays, one might say. All right. Better work this time. Seriously? Again, I, I think... Oh, shit's annoying as hell. Well... <laughs> Seriously? One last shot. God damn it, Twitter. I hate you. All right. Looks like we're only Reddit memes today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twitter doesn't want to meme it up today, I guess. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, this is good. Remember Hawk? Uh, he's back in pog form. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty much your meme coins and your NFTs at the moment. Uh, you know, sad but true. I bet you Reddit works on this video. But uh, if you uh, have a friend who needs a little help because they uh, can't handle the bull market, can't handle the dips along the way, then have them call 1-800-DEV-SAVES, apparently. Are you doing okay this meme season? Do you have FOMO? You see everyone making money, but not you. You just can't catch a break, can you? And even when you win, it still feels like you're losing. And it's tough. Have you thought about hurting yourself? Like putting a shotgun to the back of your head? Don't do it. If you're having dangerous thoughts, give us a call right now. We have trained professionals standing by 24 steps. This is can't win. There will always be another trade, okay? She sounds wise beyond her years. <laughs> but, um, you know, the dev, I would say, usually C plus memes. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they're, they're decent enough, I guess. But 
the one thing in sentiment that we have to understand when the dev memes come out that we still get them this bull market right once the quality starts getting high on the dev memes uh oh top signals coming in right so so far so good we can still be buying coins now twitter's probably going to mess this one up right mhm mm you twitter sucks today oh seriously twitter you can't even like play sound what's wrong with you anyways <laughs> uh bear market fud bitcoin getting above a hundred thousand dollars everybody's gonna just say hey you just got lucky uh no you just weren't paying attention and i'm sad that this meme cannot be played today or this one actually I was looking forward to those ones, but at least Miss Yellen understanding that uh, inflation is no longer transitory uh, is uh, able to uh, be played here today. Council has discussed crypto regulations and legislations at length, and we have come to the conclusion that instead of regulating, we are going to ape a fat bag each into laptop and pump it to over a billion, 300 million trillion market cap. Let's fucking go crackheads. <laughs> oh, that means never going to get old. And the sad part is I don't think this one's going to work for us today. Nope. Twitter's, Twitter's robbing us, which means we have to rip this off Twitter, put it on the back end here so that that can no longer happen ever again. Um, but anyways, even the memes you know on twitter basically getting blocked here uh is part of the fud but uh we can ignore all the fud because we know bitcoin is headed to 100k already so let's see what's going on in the chat and then we will jump into market price action bitcoin price action ethereum and so on and take a look at what's moving on the market here today mm. Lou Ashby with the five dollars super chat have five ETH in profit have only twenty alluvium thoughts on one ETH into alluvium, yeah I think uh, alluvium will outpace Ethereum uh, as of right now they're kind of uh, doing similar uh, nothing too crazy but um, yeah once alluvium starts breaking out above one fifty one sixty yeah I think it will be good but um, yeah I, I guess that's the, the way to to look at it right now but. I, I also like I would treat that as part of like a trading bag um, because uh, yeah you don't want to be trading around your your core position too much um, in my opinion. Marvis Journey with the forty nine nine super chat saying I have a line of credit for thirty five k at a rate of twelve percent interest. I'm tempted to use it for crypto. What are your thoughts? I would say no, <laughs> don't do it. Um, yeah, just because I mean will it work probably right most likely but uh mindset wise uh are you okay paying 12 percent interest per year and how long would that take to pay back um you know if it's hey i can take the hit on my yearly salary on that for one year and eat it and then pay it back sure um if uh you're like mm, i would pay that off over more than two years i would say probably not so um yeah, but knowing this market, you pr it'll probably work out at this point in the market, right? So you have to kind of also know where you're at in the market. I would say if you would have asked me under 40 or under $30,000 Bitcoin, should I do that? I wouldn't say it's the best idea in the world, but you can do it pretty safely at that point. Um, whereas, you know, we're more than 2x higher than that or at a 2x higher than that right now. Uh, the masculine investor with the 499 Super Chat says, can you break down how market cap numbers and FIB help you evaluate price like you're talking to a four-year-old yeah i like that um so in terms of fib right um your normal fibonacci retracement is basically um you have your point well i have to take a look here at what it actually is um, because i forget the numbers unless i see it in front of me so yeah the point uh 382 that is so uh i'll probably share this on screen once i get to the charts but essentially your point 382 is your uh pullback zone for the bull market um then your 0.618 uh 
is basically your golden ratio zone, which is where uh, a more uh, hardy pullback should happen. Um, if you get a larger pullback, uh, and then your max pullback is 0.786 um, on the downside, right? If you're looking to the upside on the extension, uh, then once you pass 0.786, um, you're likely to hit uh, new highs from there and then go into extensions uh, on the FIB ratios unless, you know, uh, your chart is uh, more bullish than that. So the FIB numbers like that are pretty useful. That's the basics. Um, and uh, then the FIB, what was that called? The trend-based FIB extension, um, that one is better for ABC patterns, basically uh, three wave patterns in your corrective phases in a bull market that's a pullback in a bull market or in a bear market that is your temporary uh, move to the upside. And so that one's harder to use. And I actually have different numbers on that for various reasons, part of which I have never disclosed in any of the courses or anything, because um, yeah, if you, if you really want to go and learn deeply about FIB levels, I'd recommend, uh, what was that book called? napoli levels um i believe uh if you go and read that book i forgot who the author was uh, but that book you could probably find like a pdf copy online for free something like that um but that book uh Denapoli levels is is uh you can go deep into the fib levels but then i guess in terms of market cap numbers the only thing like with market cap numbers you just have to kind of like try to think about what wall street is thinking um, in terms of, hey, I'm looking at market cap for unit bias numbers instead of price because they tell every, they, it's kind of their little trick, right? Hey, we say uh, to everybody uh, out there basically that $100,000 Bitcoin, $250,000 Bitcoin, whatever price, right? That's the number that we want everybody focusing on. They want people focusing on dollars. Whereas where between uh, $20,000 Bitcoin, which, forget what the market cap was at the time for Bitcoin, but uh, between $20,000 Bitcoin to $100,000 Bitcoin on a USD level, where why would we slow down in the middle there, right? 25K, 75K is just as likely to slow down as 50K. Um, but around $50,000, $55,000 Bitcoin is where you have $1 trillion market cap. So if you look at that as unit bias, um, then you're like, okay, the theory at the time was maybe Wall Street focuses on that. And you just have it as a theory to begin with, any of those types of things with market cap where you might see like certain patterns uh, hit. And then uh, if it plays out over time, it's like, okay, that's likely to be true. Um, you can never be 100% certain exactly what they're thinking until, you know, you talk to those guys um, on Wall Street, like Larry Fink. But generally speaking, um, that's pretty much what has played out. And so then if you think about it compared to price, if the market cap goes up, um, and basically tops out a little bit above a trillion dollar Bitcoin comes back down. Now we're back a little bit above a trillion dollar Bitcoin. That's likely to hold us support as we break into new all time highs. So anytime we come down under one, well, anytime Bitcoin's under 1.5 trillion in market cap, it's likely to be a, a good time to buy in the market. And um, if we get down uh, anywhere near a trillion or under 1.2 trillion market cap for Bitcoin, that's going to be even better time to buy, but might not happen. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to have different theories on that in terms of how we go uh, and see if it plays out. Um, Crypto Freak with 499 Super Chat says, if we get single top for Bitcoin between September to November, and if Pulse slowly starts moving up from August, do you think we still make a 5X? I think I already answered this one as yes. The only thing here is um, if we get a peak in October or before, that will technically be a four-year left translated cycle, uh, meaning that uh, we technically would go into a uh, possibility of going into a bear market uh, from uh, November, October, November of this year. Now, that would be if Bitcoin went absolutely insane to like 180,000 by that time. If we get the four-year cycle high in November or December, um, then that is uh, a uh, kind of like neutral cycle meaning we'd probably get a bear market a little earlier but um, it wouldn't be that bad or it'd be pretty normal uh just be a little longer in time and then we uh if we got a high somewhere between march to october 2025 then we'd most likely be in our uh normal four-year cycle highs and um so yeah uh that's a little extra on that answer then uh miko miko with the five dollar super chat says invested heavy on ehex now fast forwarding i'm uh 18k uh, deep out of uh, 52k portfolio, uh, any non-financial advice or just hold at this point one cent average. 
Um, yeah, it depends on what you want to do with that. Like at the moment, because I do think um, the Luvium has a pretty good shot of running once it does move uh, strongly. I think, you know, um, putting it in that is no problem because if you're looking at 18K getting back to 52K, it's really all you need is a 3X. And I think Alluvium will provide that by the time we get to uh, August, let's say. So will the question is, will Pulse Chain or uh, Pulse X be able to do that? I think from where we're at now, we probably can see anywhere between a... Uh, yeah, 3x plus um, between now and, and sometime uh, if Pulse Chain and Pulse X really, really start uh, getting going here. Um, I think that is possible. But um, yeah, I, I think Pulse Chain will kind of be accumulating at these uh, levels underneath its previous all time high before it really pops off, maybe in the midsummer. So, uh, but if you want to just hold the E hex, uh, I would say just put it over on uh, pulse chain hex uh, and then sit on it there. But that also I think was dumping recently. So um, in the pulse chain ecosystem, it looks like time and uh, pulse X uh, are some of the bigger winners ink ink as well. Um, DSG with the Australian 299 says more people watching live. Good sentiment indicator. I, I agree. I think last week I had the most consultations I've had since the last bull market basically. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I would say most of that is retail waking up who was here back in 21, 22. Some of those people have stayed throughout the whole bear market paying attention. Some people just coming back. So uh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> Daniel Flores with the 999 super chat save, saying Marvin ape that 35 K. Uh, not financial advice. No, I like it. Um, Cus Cole with 199 says, will ILV get one more dip or should we get it now? Uh, I think whatever you want um, before we get higher lows or higher prices uh, as price ascends here going into the summer, you want to get this week. Um, but that's just me, uh, right? <laughs> Do your own research. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. So let's get over to price on... Uh, the market here today and we'll get on to bitcoin and ethereum and then we'll take a look at um, some other stuff on the market but uh let's do it so anybody who doesn't get the moon gung reference um i would suggest come over here and uh watch this uh tv show that just came out at the end of february uh called shogun uh, pretty good show. Uh, and uh, they actually speak like historical Japanese in it. So kind of cool. Um, the only thing is it's like here, it's like uh, historical fiction, right? So basically they change some of the names of the people um, in history, right? Like uh, Lord Toronaga, I believe is uh, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu. So like, yeah, it's, uh, you know, different characters than the real life, but kind of going along the same storylines. And the first two episodes of this series are is a uh, freaking awesome. So uh, yeah, just uh, having fun with memeing it up on the uh, thumbnail today. But if you do want to go in and look at some history, right? The uh, guy who uh, is the character of Tori Naga in Shogun uh, is uh, actually Tokugawa Ieyasu, and he is the person who actually unified uh, the entire country of Japan. And um, yeah, I think there actually should be a movie on uh Ieyasu just like by himself which uh yeah this guy like defied death a million different ways uh kind of crazy uh history but anywho uh just a nod to the show here on the thumbnail but uh let's jump into price action so on coin gecko today we have us getting close to 2.8 trillion dollar market cap for all of crypto for Bitcoin, still under that $1.5 trillion market cap. Uh, I don't have that open here today. I was going to, well, maybe I can do this here. I will actually pull that up. What, what, hold on, where is that? Right. Oops going to get out the market cap calculator and get you guys a price that would be equivalent to Bitcoin there at that market cap. 
Nice. Uh, T Slice says, just start, uh, just tuning in, started Shogun last night. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. I already got through all the first six episodes. And I just started watching it like last week. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's definitely good stuff. So uh, and I think the newest episode came out today, like the seventh episode or something, or the sixth one. I can't remember. Um, uh, all right. So, back to prices. Uh, Shogun's on Hulu, but um, you can also find it for free if you look hard enough. <laughs> uh, just because you can. Depends if you like the rest of Hulu or not. But, so I wanted to go into the market cap calculator here. So, at $1.5 trillion Bitcoin, what is the price of Bitcoin? Uh, let's guess. Looks like $76,500. Um, yeah, as long as you're buying underneath there, um, you're getting, um, uh, you know, a relatively decent price. I think Bitcoin, yeah, has a good shot of coming up here to like, uh, $80,000, you know, over the next, uh, one month, maybe higher. And, um, yeah. Uh, coming back in May towards the, the 1.5 trillion market cap overall wouldn't surprise me. So um, there we go. But um, yeah, ideally under, around that 1.3, 1.2 is pretty good price on the pullback. Let's take a look at what's moving here today. First, we'll look at Arweave and Internet Computer, uh, my favorite cryptocurrency, as you guys know. <laughs> and then to the downside, nothing dumping today. So basically a few coins pumping everything else, chopping sideways in the top 100. On the lower cap coins, we got Polymesh. Ooh, interesting. Aerodome Finance. Um, uh, reserve Rights. Uh, Mantra. Alt Layer. Radix. We'll go only above 15%. Core. Anchor. Pal AI. That's quite a few coins pumping today in the top 200 and uh only blocks w more than 15 percent today so uh let's take a look uh are we um yeah basically this is coming up to the level it's kind of like a solana move is what are has already done for itself it started here at four bucks now it's at 40 right so very nice move here um i would say it's wave one two and it's in the middle of its three probably close to ending um, so it probably comes up a little bit more here, maybe challenges its previous all-time high, maybe goes a little bit beyond. And then like Bitcoin probably uh, consolidates around this area of price, the previous all-time high here at about 80 bucks, um, but maybe a little bit lower, 60 bucks to 80 bucks, somewhere in that range, right? Uh, maybe up to 90 and then probably consolidates around the current price of about 40, maybe 40 to $60, somewhere in that range before then continuing in the bull market. So Quite a nice move, very smooth chart for the for the most part here on Arweave. So, um, yeah, not a bad place to buy it on a breakout, sell it once it gets a little high, let it roll back down and, and buy it again if that's what you want to do. Uh, internet computer. Uh, so we know that the U.S. dollar, right, is cons consistently losing value to inflation, and uh, inflation is not transitory. So therefore. Coins like Dogecoin can pump and internet computer as well. So uh, against Ethereum, it has gone up ever so slightly, right? So it's looking like it's starting to turn around. I do think internet computer will make money in this bull market, but I do think um, also it'll be used as a coin for Andres and Horowitz to take profits off of. And if you understand how venture capitalists uh, or VCs uh, work with money in crypto during a bull market, they're pretty much the same as retail traders, meaning that uh, they lag the market. So they will, you know, buy tops and and take profits at certain times and, and all that kind of stuff. So at some point, I do think uh, Internet Computer gets profits taken on it. Um, but uh, again, we will see um, the, you know, the let it run first. Um, Polymesh. Wow, that's pumping, and that's a pump I do not want to jump on, right? Because this coin really has a shitty chart. It's like 
basically looks like a heartbeat. You know, somebody's dying from a heart attack or something. I don't know. But then it just shot up like crazy here. And um, this thing is probably its first time coming into the top 200 for a while. So anytime you see a coin jump up into the higher market cap ranges really quickly, uh, a lot of the times the profits are taken and they just fall out of favor for a while and the price comes back down. I'm not saying that that needs to happen. Maybe it's a good project. Maybe there's good things happening that I, I don't know about and it's coming up from here. But from most coins that I've seen that jump up this high this fast, they usually, you know, what goes up must come down. Um, Aerodome Finance. Now, this one's a different story. I would say uh, this is on base, right? And um, uh, a few projects out here on Ethereum, basically from the same organization, right, have done well. Um, but a lot of people aren't talking about them yet. So we see Aerodome here um, basically jumping up from its October lows and making a really nice chart here. It really came out here in September, went down for a bit. You got some accumulation zones basically up to about eight and a half cents and now it's a dollar 80 42 damn that is a nice nice move right and so i think a move like this is likely to continue as long as bitcoin and ethereum right are, are moving here so yeah really nice move here <laughs> uh yeah i wish i would have bought this in february that would have been nice <laughs> but uh yeah uh, again probably a project that continues to run pretty heavily um, especially because there's not a lot of good projects on base yet, right? So uh, this being on base is something that a lot of people can focus on, like, oh, shit, finally a quality project on base. Um, so there you go. Um, if you want to see their website, you can just go to the Aerodome Finance, uh, so the Central Trading and Liquidity Marketplace on base. Uh, I like that. And so a uh, next generation automated marketing system, so that can uh, do really well on the back end um, for base. So, yeah, I, I think that's a solid buy. Uh, if you don't have any exposure to the base ecosystem, this would be probably top candidate for a coin. Um, NFTs, you can have exposure already, but um, for a coin, uh, this might be one of the, the top candidates there, if not the top candidate. Um, reserve rights at a penny. So on its come up, I think pretty much reserve rights uh, slowly makes its way towards about two and a half cents. Um, we'll see how long it takes to get there. Um, but yeah, probably goes up towards that range, maybe exceeds it a little bit and then kind of settles down. So this one, it's not making crazy gains against ETH yet. You can see it actually gained a loss against ETH all the way until January of this year. And then it started out pacing. So um, yeah, it might not continue that streak. Mantra looks like this thing is going to at max pull back to like 30 cents or up to you know yeah right around where it's at now pulls back to this area maybe down to like 50 cents or something at, at worst but if bitcoin is accumulating and starting to move higher then this likely continues its run here so this has been kind of crazy it came from two cents it's now at 70 cents uh so yeah this one's on a rip i wouldn't really want to buy this on the breakout too much or if you did you know, you just have to watch it pretty closely because uh, this can keep going up to a few dollars, I think, um, before it comes crashing down, um, maybe in, in sometime in, in mid to late April. Alt layer. What is this thing doing? 60 cents. Um, 30 cents to 20. Well, this was back in February, right? And then first run up to 55 cents. Uh, dip the next run up to 60 cents dip run up. Yeah, this thing's going to break out. <laughs> so um, the only the only thing you see here on this uh, that is maybe showing it some weakness here is that it broke below the lows that it had here in late February. So that gives you some uh, pause for some bearishness. But the, where did it get its support? Got to support right here and then comes makes another support level at this um, basin that it had accumulated at before and then goes and challenges all time highs. So we get to pull back, you know, the best you're going to get maybe is about 50 cents. And then this continues. So at 60 cents, this is probably a good place. If alt layer is a coin you want to buy. Remember though, um, you know, supply is not fully out yet on this. 
Um, but, you know, uh, it's dealing with rollups and different things like that um, to help scale uh, in Ethereum Web3. So I like it. Um, and yeah, I think a coin can do well. And it's already been doing well, you know, from, you know, it's all on a 2x for the year. So nothing crazy. Uh, nothing, you know, don't have to really run and chase after it like crazy. Radix, this is a coin I love to hate uh, simply because I've heard a lot of people shill this um, for a very long time. And it's only had two pumps here in October of 21 to November of 21 for maybe like a month. And then here from May of 23 to April of 23 for like a month. Uh, and then it's just gone sideways, sit down after that. So I think way overhyped coin. Um, most supply is out. So it better start pumping from here. Um, I'll believe it once it really passes about 15 cents. Um, then I think it can get some momentum. But until then, it probably um, oscillates between 10 to 15 cents before breaking out. So is it cheap? And will it go up in dollars? Sure. Um, but it, it has a terrible, terrible track record thus far versus Ethereum. Um, so I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, Core. I have never heard of this coin. This one probably comes up towards 85 cents, gets resistance there. That's what it's doing. If it continues, it can pop off on a 2X and go to like $1.50, $1.60, somewhere in there um, from there. So, yeah, we'll see if this one pops and goes to the upside. Um, kind of worst case scenario is it stays around 70 cents for a while. Um, if, if, right, this is a project that's going to end up doing well. I don't even know if it's a quality project at all. What is it? Core DAO, decentralized application structured by Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, build with EVM compatible smart contracts on a Bitcoin powered blockchain. Now, if that is actually what they have built and it is actionable and it works, then I would say definitely bullish. So, what's this? Uh, delegated proof of work for the mining pools. Okay. Um, the DAO core DAO started as a community looking for better solutions. And that's why it, what, it, what it remains with principles grounded in the premise of Bitcoin Ethereum. Our power comes from embracing multiple ideas and communities. I actually like that. That's a very kind of refreshing take from people in crypto, um, to be honest, because the Bitcoin maxis out there just, you know, sometimes they're fun, but not always. Uh, the opposite of a winner take all mentality core is focused instead on platform growth and driving the global adoption of blockchain technology. All right, cool. Um, yeah, it has, has potential, right? So I, I'm not going to go look into it any further, but yeah, might be worth a little bit of a shot here. You know, it's 88 cents. So it's basically under a dollar. If you buy it under a dollar, again, stupid logic, easy to math though. Uh, you buy 100 under a dollar, it goes to $10. You know, you got $10,000. Um, or yeah, a thousand dollars. So, what do you call it? Pretty cheap, right? But if you buy a thousand dollars and it goes, um, you know, basically a 10x is something that you could probably expect out of something like this. So, yeah, not bad. Um, probably goes higher. This one has what? What is that? Uh, yeah, 21 billion coins. Uh, so yeah, kind of trying to make itself like Bitcoin a little bit uh anchor still hasn't broken out but looks like it wants to so at about five cents where it's currently at if it breaks out uh it can head start heading towards about 10 cents so again another little 2x here um i think you're probably going to see a lot of opportunities across the market for 2x pluses i think over the next one month um yeah about a 2x is reasonable to expect from an altcoin more than that and you know Great, but um, a 2x is reasonable over one month. Um, PAL AI, 77 cents. This looks like it's just going to continue to run. Um, yeah, it's gone done well from a penny and a half to 77 cents. It's AI, and it just says I'm going to keep moving to the upside. So would I want to jump on it now? Not necessarily. Could you throw a scratcher at it under a dollar, buy 100 of them, or buy 1,000 of them under a dollar, and you make some money? Sure. And I think that's what all of them that were moving on the market here today. So let's take a look at Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum 
just before we do a word from your sponsor me myself and i and dollar cost crypto come over here to cultivate crypto.com slash shop uh if you press the shop here you'll see the consultation one-on-one -on -one single lesson um for 1998 uh or a uh, much cheaper option um the citadel uh telegram access for 98 dollars a month but uh, remember you do get a 50 dollars rebate or coupon off of a future crypto mindset course for every month that you renew in the citadel so over the course of a year you can get up to 600 dollars off one uh crypto mindset course which is about 60 percent off you add paying in bitcoin or ethereum on that um, but for an extra 15 percent off and you'll get 75 percent off uh, one crypto mindset course this year. So remember, it pays to be in the Citadel. Of course, there's a lot of other things going on there, but we'll just stick there for now. Um, but let's take a look at the chat and then we will get into Bitcoin, which is why we're here today. Bitcoin and how Bitcoin is moving the market. All right. most likely they're going to be announcing that this week um but expect it roughly in about a month uh let's see here love crypto says good evening or morning wherever you may all wherever you all may be um charlie what are your thoughts on DeFi kingdoms where do you see it going um will it hit two dollars in an all season i do not know how high DeFi kingdoms will go but i do think it will go up um, so I think it has a good shot uh, of making a move because um, uh, all tokens are out and it's um, pretty well established on the uh, AVAX ecosystem now uh, where a lot of game is happening. So, you know, they've made the right moves over the bear market to kind of get some attention. So I do think the price runs how high. I don't know yet. I haven't looked. Mm -hmm. good uh guy como uh says uh what percentage of your portfolio would you recommend to keep in bitcoin and ethereum it's 50 percent too much also what do you think will match lv this bull market um so yeah I, I would say at this moment you know i would take most bitcoin put that into eth if that in total is 50 percent of the portfolio it is not too much that's a pretty good rudder in the portfolio uh, mainly in eth uh, and then, you know, focus on the, that allow you to focus on, uh, other stuff that's going on, um, and, uh, take more risk. So, um, yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, if you wanted to go lower, I would say don't go any lower than a, a third, 33% of the, uh, portfolio being in Ethereum. So, um, yeah, 40% is good. If you're going to, you know, shave off five or 10% cause you've made profit on ETH. Um, you can shave off a little bit and put that into some other coins if you like. Um, but no need to, if you don't want to, um, also, who do you think, uh, uh, who do you think will match? I'll be this bull market. I think, um, I mean, Paulson Paul's X probably will outpace it. Um, but it might take some time and Solana, right. Um, uh, is kind of the other, uh, coin to kind of, um, look at things against. So I think I'll be does better than Solana and ETH, which would be pretty good. Um, but um yeah a lot of other layer ones will pretty much do the same as solana so um what do you call it uh phantom avax uh dot um all of these i think will will probably be similar <laughs> said, there's a guy in the crypto mindset telegram or one of them not the current one who or he's in like a few of them is super bearish uh calling for new lows you see that yeah <laughs> do i care no <laughs> um uh, i'm kind of entertained by it to be honest it's like our local gareth soloway in the chat who um you know uh it's like peter schiff right uh call it can be right two times a day um <laughs> so um yeah are we going to 12k bitcoin come on give me a fucking break um and that was the top <laughs> oh good shit uh the sit down with 199 some chat best wallet for kusama fearless um i believe exodus also uh allows it too 
Um, but yeah, Fearless Wallet is going to be likely the best and easiest. Mm -hmm. Elliot Roof says, I joined late. Sorry uh, if you already covered this, but do you think there will be a dip this week or are we just pumping at this point? Um, the jury is out on that, but I think we at least have found a low and we kind of chop sideways before pumping. We'll see. Once we start pumping above, I'll have to look at the chart here in a minute, but uh, above certain prices, then I think we will get moving. Um, anybody who is putting that coin uh, in the chat just because it is spammed the shit out of um mods um basically ban all of those accounts that is your uh duty here for the moon gang um so time to um uh, what do you call it uh slice up uh some of those guys i won't show any of the things on on the stream just because stop spamming the goddamn chat um so it's gonna be kind of like whack-a-mole for you guys so uh where's it where's ma and uh tony and these guys when you need them get on it uh thank you very much um, cause that's just going to ruin the chat for everybody else. Mm -mm -mm. But you know, when you're getting spammed by the poor because they're trying to steal your money, um, <laughs> um, that's, you know, uh, then, uh, you know, the bull market's in full swing. <laughs> I agree. Um, Bapstar with five dollars super chat says worth it to buy any scream uh in your opinion uh haven't looked at it recently to be able to say to be honest um but boo looks pretty cheap market cap wise exactly swing those band hammers slice them up um in japanese you could say koroshite which just means to kill uh, get rid of them. <laughs> uh, since we're sticking with the Shogun theme, Bryce Scanlin with the $10 super chat says, how do I not lose all of my money? This cycle thoughts on a zero, <laughs> the best way to not lose money. All your money. This cycle is to a buy before the end of June, if not the beginning of June, um, hold, let price go up. Um, and then when the pie cycle top indicator crosses, um, within the next, two weeks to a month after that feel free to sell everything or at least leave a 10 percent moon bag based on profits uh and then uh, if we get a double top or you know that happens uh we get like a, a very obvious bottom then that would be a time to get back in but yeah if you want to make sure to take profits then you got to take profits but you got to pay attention for the right timing on that um so you know, crypto is like, you know, learning a language, going to the gym, whatever. You just have to continue doing it constantly, persistently, uh, consistently and persistently, and you will do fine. Um, <laughs> wrench powers are activated. <laughs> the fastest mods in the West. Uh, it does look like we actually got rid of most of them. So, so far, so good. Um, or maybe they just didn't like us calling them poor. Um Che Mac uh, says, is it risky keeping your crypto on MetaMask? Been looking at a hard wallet, but not sure if it's needed. Uh, it's always good to have a hard wallet just in case so that anything you're not going to buy or sell or use for six months, you just throw in there. Um, but yeah, MetaMask is safe as long, uh, it's as safe as you, right? So um, human error is usually the, the most likely thing to compromise a wallet. So don't click fishy links, use it on uh, a place that's unlikely to get access uh access to the internet or whatever very often stuff like that you know best practices that people are like ah you know it's a pain in the ass to do that extra two steps and the oh and it's gone right so just make sure to follow those best practices if you don't know what some of the best practices are for that then get into the next crypto mindset course here um chris garcia for q2 uh chris garcia with the canadian 279 says do you think alluvium will outperform beam uh i don't know i haven't looked at beam recently but um I think ILV will pretty much give anything a run for its money over the next six months. Mm, 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 mm. 100% Mr. Angry Twinkie out here with the uh, good advice as usual says, also join the Crypto Mindset uh, course and sit it all uh, so that you can learn the ropes. Yeah, for anybody who's like really, really curious, right? Jump into uh, the uh, Citadel. So that way um, you can ask as many questions as you want. There's no such thing as a dumb question in there. 
uh, except for uh, DWB. Is it going to pump or not? <laughs> Joking. Um, but uh, generally speaking, yeah, there's no dumb questions. You can ask and discuss anything in there. And uh, yeah, the world is your oyster. Um, Owen Norwood with the 499 Super Chat says, I'll be able to DCA a couple thousand per week starting later this month. Um, do you have a few uh, coin picks for higher X's that should take uh, that should take longer uh, to run? Um, Pulse and Pulse X, PLS and PLSX are the uh, biggest ones. If you want to know a fast way to get into those, go to Crypto Coffee on YouTube. He has uh, the most recent uh, and uh, extensive tutorial on that. ILV for the game Five Space Sandbox. If it hasn't pumped yet, I haven't looked at it recently, but last time I looked at it, it was still relatively low. Gala is also low. Uh, Tone Coin is starting to break out, so that's like last grab on that. Um, and then, yeah, if you watch any of the shows, maybe a handful of shows that we've done over the last couple of weeks, um, then, um, yeah, you'll probably uh, get some other ideas there, too. Got to do the work. Let's see here. Um, all right, let's get into the Bitcoin chart, unless I see another really relevant question. Uh, Gabriel um, says, what do you think of the Brave browser required for airdrops and other interactions? Greetings from Brazil. I don't like a project that's like you have to have Brave, Brave browser to interact with an airdrop. I think that's kind of uh, ridiculous, but um, I like Brave browser as a browser that has uh, you know some privacy features on it. So as a browser itself is fine, but the BAT uh, token, no thank you. Uh, I don't need it. So um yeah it's just another option it's just as good as chrome uh if not better in some respects but um you know i don't need to only use that nice ellen says the citadel C citadelphia um uh, is uh 591 people strong almost at that 600 so join the citadel become the 600th member of the citadel and uh yeah you can say you were the 600 citadel member forever i think there was one guy in there a while back who who had changed their uh, handle to the number that they were when they joined the Citadel because I think the Citadel when we uh, had it we had it as the Cultivate Crypto Trading Chat, uh, which is the best name ever. Uh, we had that 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 for like uh, two years and then uh, we had it shifted it into the Citadel. I think around eighty to one hundred or one hundred twenty people, something like that. Uh, how when was that? I can't remember when we did that. Uh. Uh, Bryce says, can you check out a zero um, por favor? Uh, sure, we can take a look at it while we get into uh, the price chart here on Bitcoin. But yeah, we usually don't take too many requests uh, on the daily show. Uh, come back on Friday if you want more, but just because uh, you asked nicely, sure. Um, all right, sweet. Um, Jordan Forsberg, first drop Forsberg, I don't even know says, uh, uh, what's your game plan for Solana? Um, buy, hold till a thousand plus, and then, you know, or uh, anytime the market on Bitcoin Ethereum looks like it's an obvious sell, um, then trade it around. But yeah, um, buy, sold, and make it go higher. Uh, Funkmaster X says, Citadelphia has twice as many people as my hometown. <laughs> that is some funny ass shit. Um, all right, so let's get into Bitcoin and Ethereum here, and then we will... Uh, get into some re reckless speculation on the charts. Oh, good. We got some people uh, knowing better than me. Uh, Minnesota Mitch, appreciate you. Uh, says uh, August 2023 opened as a Citadel. Yeah, I would have sworn I would have done it in 2022. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Adjusted 2022. That makes more sense. August 22. Yeah, that makes sense. Pretty much the middle of the bear market, right? Uh, or close to the end of the bear market. Interesting, huh? Um, good time to be uh dollar cost averaging then in the citadelphia um boom, 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 boom. all righty then let's get into it so oh yeah so just to answer a little bit more detail right um that uh fibonacci question so Again, the Napoli levels uh, for the win there. But so if you're taking most, um, what do you call it, uh, retracement levels on a FIB ratio, um, you're going from a low price to a high price if you're looking for a correction or a temporary down move in a bull trend, which is an uptrend in a market. 
Um, so something along, along the lines of, right, you come up, you hit your high, right? So you get your whatever five wave sequence, then you go from uh, essentially the low of that sequence to the high of the sequence, and then the price should pull back at least right to the 0.382 on a corrective move, and then the trend continues to the upside. So that's essentially what you look at there. And I said the 0.382 is your usual pullback. Sometimes it's only to the 0.236, but very rarely. Um, but the 0.382 is your, your normal pullback area. Uh, if it gets a deeper pullback, 0.618 to 0.55, somewhere in that range. A lot of coins have pulled back and kind of held above that 0.55 range and then continued up in this bull market, which kind of shows the extra bullishness. It's so bullish that price can't even dip to the proper FIB levels before continuing to the upside, right? So that's in a bull trend or a bull market. In a bear market, you do the exact opposite. You go from the high to the low price, and um, then you just basically look at everything but opposite. Um, if you also want to do that as extensions in a bull market, so take that corrective ABC move, go from the top to bottom of that, and then you get the next price zones that, that things could go towards on those FIB extensions. So that's the basics on that. But Bitcoin here on the we uh, prices we were talking about last week, right? On the weekly, we had this weekly close here at about $63,000 and some change uh, back in the end of February. And last week I said, if we did close below that area, that would warn of possibly a bigger price drop towards about $54,000. That did not happen The price went down there and then sucked back up uh, to about $67,000. So on the weekly closes, Bitcoin's price has not really gone below $67,000, which is actually pretty bullish right now. Uh, and then this weekly close, which has a sell setup, right, should act as support uh, as long as Bitcoin stays bullish into a new 60-day cycle here. So that level that we don't want to see a weekly close below is $67,200. So that's about a uh, $4,000 increase from the previous level that Bitcoin needs to hold in order to continue and make a new uh, positive 60 day cycle. So that's the first, I, I would say probably most important um, factor involved here. If we go down to the daily time frame, we saw these white levels here are the levels that were broken to the downside to head towards a cycle low. Then these two levels here um, of basically uh, 64,500 and 65,600 or so, those areas were the areas of the low of the cycle and areas we needed to regain um, in order to start a new potential 60-day cycle. But because of the highs of all these candles here, it's closer to this breakdown area of 68,600. That's the area you really wanted to gain uh, in order to say we're bullish. So yesterday's daily candle, um, which was here for March 25th, um, closed at uh, 68,000. 898 so not quite that 69 420 for today's episode but we did pass that price multiple times at one point within the last uh 24 hours or so so anyways uh good stuff right uh and um yeah it looks like bitcoin uh wants to continue here the more days we have above uh i would say this 70,000 or 69,000 area um that the better for price to want to continue to go up so if we look at this current 60 day cycle with a 51 day high. And then from the last cycle, the low is actually um, short, which means, again, we're a little extra bullish here. 57 days for the low on a right translated cycle. Usually you go at least 60 days. Um, so that means Bitcoin's pretty bullish right now if it makes a new all time high um, in the coming, I would say, 10 days. So what was that, 57? There we go. So that's what we got going right now. It looks highly unlikely that any of this zone will be hit. So we'll take that off. The price that we did have um, for a low on a FIB level was $60,400. And we hit a low here of uh, uh, $60,760. So it didn't quite get there, about $400 off or so. And, uh, you know, price aside, hey, we're really bullish right now. Want to continue up. So if we do consider that we're in a new 60-day cycle, we would have a current high on day five. We usually see a high, if, even if it's a left translated cycle, we usually see a high on day seven or later. Um, so that would be on Wednesday. Now, the main thing here is if you 
usually, and I can say probably this level and this level don't really, it's not that they don't matter. It's just that it's not relevant that much anymore. Um, and those levels there, right? So if Bitcoin comes back in this range here, it's kind of chopping. But if it hits a new high here, that's the next level of confirmation to break out here and then say we could have a pretty positive 60-day cycle, right? So if we break that area, which the high on Bitcoin is currently uh, 73794 so just $200 shy of 74000 So if we break and have a, uh, a daily close above 74000 or even just an intraday wick above 74000 then you would uh, basically be like, okay, Bitcoin is likely to continue up for the current 60-day cycle. And then, the, so after day seven, if you continue to make highs, right, past the previous cycle high, then that says, okay, we probably have at least until uh, day 21 or around day 18 to 21, which would be uh, April 7th to the 10th, right around that period. That's the first area of time. You're probably going to want to be like maybe Bitcoin's at, let's say, $77,000, $80,000. That's the first time you're going to be like, okay, does Bitcoin show any weakness here? If not, then when would day 30, mid the midpoint of the 60-day cycle be? That would be April 19th. Now, um, we have tax season in the middle of April, and oftentimes we see profits taken to pay taxes and different things. Um, and just during that time, we sometimes see a dip. So we could see a mid-cycle dip maybe a little earlier around that uh, April 15th on day 26, and then a run-up post that into day 30. And all we would need for a um, bullish 60-day cycle is really to get past um, day 35, which would be April 24th. So if we continue to make new highs here into April 24th, then you can say, okay, we have another nice right translated 60-day cycle. And so any downside risk um, becomes uh, not nothing, but it minimized essentially, right? So um, yeah, we're at the early days of the cycle. And it looks like we should come up and at least test previous all-time highs. If we break them, then we have a good maybe one, two, three weeks um, before we see uh, too much pullback. Um, so that's on Bitcoin. On the monthly on Bitcoin, that was one I wanted to take a look at. Now, this is what gives you should give you pause, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with this month here being uh, barely green, right, back in January, um, but seven months in a row of Bitcoin going up and to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, going into the previous bull market all-time high. One, two, three, four, five, going into the beginning of that 2019 bull market. Uh, this one, one, two, three, four, five in the middle of that bull market in 2017. So what we've already experienced here in the last six months is more bullish than the most bullish period here in 2017. The only difference is 2017 just continued that whole time. So if we could see that, that would be mighty, mighty nice, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, this is the first time Bitcoin has had seven months in a row of green now. If you wanted to give that a, a secondary check, this is on Bitstamp where January was green. The one thing you would do is, okay, well, is Bitcoin red on any exchange during that month? Uh, Coinbase, no. Uh, Binance, no. Kraken, no. So for the most part, any major exchange right, considers that that month was green. Uh, I don't see any exchanges yet that have said it was red. So seven months in a row of upside. Um, we could make a new record. I mean, that's already a new record, right? We could continue to make a new record here in April. Um, but yeah, after you get like eight months in a row of Bitcoin going up and to the right, I would expect some pullback. Now you could say we had four months here, we kind of had a sideways doji. Does that really count? Now we're on two again. Maybe. Yeah, this market just might be bullish enough for that. So um, generally speaking here, um, that's that's good. Also, wherever this month closes, we'll have a sell setup signal on the monthly, um, which will be an area that we want to see then does that hold as support on a monthly level. But again, that will be a lot more of a slow going chart process. Uh, and up here at the highs, we had RSI as high as 91. Currently, RSI is only 76. So it is getting 
high and hot on the monthly, but not too crazy yet. If you do see RSI on the monthly here reach that 90 area, that's definitely going to be an area where you could potentially get uh, an initial peak in the bull market before a substantial pullback. So something to watch out for there. Um, on Ethereum, so Ethereum here on the weekly is interesting because uh, we'll go to the daily here in a minute, but we had a did have a sell confirmation on the weekly last week. Um, so if this week closes above where that confirmation happened, it can cancel it out and continue the trend to the upside. So that price for Ethereum for a weekly close that would be bullish, and that would be on Sunday at uh, midnight UTC, that would be uh, 36000 and uh, sorry, $3,650. Right, so 3650. Um, this zone here, where it actually started breaking down from, is the area that you want to see us uh, close above, and then boom, you can see Ethereum going back above four thousand dollars potentially. Right, no guarantees, but let's see how that goes. Um, for the daily, very similar to Bitcoin, but a little bit behind actually. So, Bitcoin on this pattern. is up above this area in pattern, right? Whereas Ethereum is not above that area in pattern yet. That same area for uh, Ethereum would be that 3650, right? So once Ethereum passes that, it'll then basically have caught up with Bitcoin pattern wise. And if Bitcoin starts breaking above that previous cycle high, the current all time high, then Ethereum will start heading above that $4,000 mark and above this uh, area here. And then if Ethereum on the weekly starts getting real bullish, you know, then it's going to come and test it. It tested previously or here at 4,100. It could then test the all-time high. If we do do a macro fib level, well, look at that. <clears throat> the low here was what? 80, 880. So I get, I got pretty close to that right there. Uh, look at that shit. So what did I tell you about Elliott way or not about Elliott ways about Fibonacci levels earlier? If you do go up, Right, your last area of resistance is a 0.786 before you basically test and, and go into new all time highs. So, Ethereum, right, um, it came right up to this area, got paused. And now, if it starts breaking out again and goes above that 4,000, let's say 4,100 area, then yeah, you could start seeing it come up towards 4,500, 4,800, 5,000 Ethereum. In the next one month, you could see that, right? Something like what happened with Bitcoin, where it went to a new all-time high above 69,000, came back down, consolidated before then continuing. We could see a similar thing here with Ethereum with coming up to that 48,000, 4,800, sorry, 4,900, coming back down maybe towards 4,000, consolidating, and then continuing its run in the summer. Um, so is Ethereum's price now still good and cheap? Well, pretty much the last chance to buy it is under $4,000. So if you don't have enough in your portfolio, um, now is the time. All righty. Um, once we get, let's say we go up to 5,000 and we come back down, maybe we come back down to like 3,900. Maybe, maybe not. Right. So um, we will, we'll see, but now is not a bad time at all to get a position in that, in my opinion. Uh, and on the monthly for Ethereum, is there anything there worth noting? Uh, nope. Still on a buy single on buy signal on the monthly. Total crypto market cap's about to break out into new all-time highs. So your altcoins will get running. Um, but if we take a look at total three without Bitcoin and Ethereum, we barely touched that box. We're probably gonna see this come up to 800 billion, maybe even up here to 950 billion in the next one month, right? I don't think I think this is gonna take a while for the altcoins to hit new all-time highs on this. Um but yeah, 800 to 950 billion total crypto market cap outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I can see that going there, which means your coins like ILV will run. Now, ILV is $142 here today. Uh, the weekly chart is looking nice. Um, you had this first wave up, pullback, another wave up, pullback. Once you get above this previous high here, which is $161, you get a weekly close above $161 on Alluvium, then I think you start heading towards $255. Um, if we take a look here at a couple things here, let's go 221, something like that. 
plus right about where that line is, right? So between this area of uh, 159, no, my bad. Um, what price levels? 230 to 255 is my minimum expectation for Alluvium on its next breakout if it can break above 160, right? So if we can do that on the weekly, I think it goes to 255 uh, pretty much. And from here, that's a not quite a double on your money. Um, so that's just like the short term, but I think it can go much higher than that because it's essentially entering a wave three of three. What do I mean by that is one, two, one, two of three, right? Whereas three, I think can maybe even get up to like 400 and some change, right? We're in that first big move there um, of the bull market for Alluvium. And we've seen this on pretty much every goddamn coin. Um, that we've been talking about for uh, the entirety of this year. Now I'm going to change this color because green stinks on that chart. But um, this price point here of $136, right? If we can get multiple weekly closes above that, then there is zero, virtually zero resistance between $136 on Alluvium uh, all the way up to $450. Right. So I do think this wave three probably jumps closer to that 450 level, if not up towards 650 on this next move. So let's say let's say 555, right? Pulls back maybe, right? I don't know if that will go directly there, but it could go up that range. If it's the first area could slow down as 255. I think it gets up towards this area, pull back, and then breaking of that area, consolidation again around this area before then continuing into the higher macro wave count, right? So, um, yeah, that's something to, to pay attention to. Is this a wave, full five wave sequence going to all time highs? A wave one of three pullback, maybe in the fall, right? I, I could see. Could you see by October alluvium up here at fifteen hundred dollars, eleven hundred dollars? I think the answer is possibly, right? So you could get it up to a ten x within this year on alluvium. Uh, and then it pulls back and then it continues to move. Something like that is possible. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but ILV is looking pretty nice here. Um, then I'm going to go back. Uh, yeah, not going to go through too many coin requests, even though, Eric, it is your first super chat. It makes me kind of want to look at it, so I guess I should. And all right. So A0. Let's see. All right, we'll take a look at two coins. Because you guys, uh, we're not a casual Friday, but it is what it is. Alpha Zero. Um, no more coin requests, though. <laughs> um, Alpha Zero, chopping sideways very clearly. Most of its price action is $0.90 cents, um, to $1.60 or 50 and then it kind of just consolidates around there. So, yeah, it looks like a coin I would want to trade to, you know, between these levels, every time it pumps this much up towards $1.50, sell it, let it dump down back towards a dollar, buy it again. You know, that's kind of the play here. That's what it seems like. Uh, so, so far, just in terms of price action, nothing special. Um, most of its supply is out. That's a good sign. And what is it? Blazing fast, exceptionally private. Deploy Web3 apps that are fast as legacy solutions. Alpha Zero is a layer one that enables... Teams that deploy scalable, secure, low-cost, and ZK privacy-enhanced products across multiple uh, verticals from DeFi and gaming to enterprise. So I like that idea. If they can pull it off, I think that's good. I think the L1 narrative is a little uh, overcrowded at this point. So they need to really provide um, you know, some price appreciation to show that they're actually doing really well because price appreciation is some of the best marketing to get people interested in it. So I just don't, I see this as like maybe like a C plus or a B minus layer one that um, so far hasn't really proven itself in price. And until it does maybe steadily stay above $2, uh, then I'll, you know, look at it more seriously. But until then it's just kind of chopping. Uh, previous all time high is $3, right? So between two to $3 is basically where you want to accumulate it if it does end up doing well. But uh, the jury's out on this one. And 
thoughts on <laughs> oh yeah uh the uh well here's the thing right so uh he's actually good about the cock meme coin <laughs> right we got cocky new uh basically uh among other things and just in terms of this one um where was that avax right here so avax actually has their avax foundation uh community holdings right cocky new is one of them right also no chill right which uh AVAX has no chill. This one right here, it's actually been chilling. But hey, uh, actually, no, it's been chilling up into the right. So yeah, this has actually been move, continuing to move to the upside. So again, AVAX has no chill. Um, but yeah, um, where was it? Yeah, this one I think probably will continue. You see the first meme move on this. And uh, yes, we are taking this one seriously because I, I mean, they're not going to add it to the AVAX Foundation wallet for nothing. Um, so it made a really good run up here for a bit, pulled back in February, made another good run up to March 11th, pulling back. If basically you could see this is correlated with Bitcoin because Bitcoin peaked out in December, came back down into the uh, ETF approval, then started coming back up into March, pulling back now. Once Bitcoin hits a new all-time high, this could probably continue higher. So um, can you make money on this? Definitely. <laughs> uh, on AVAX, I mean, and again, uh, the AVAX Foundation is holding it along with Kimbo, Gecko, uh, and Tech. Um, so I think all these coins, because of that reason and that reason only, merit actually uh, considering. Um, so yeah, uh, why not? Um, so that's what's happening there. Then Pulse Chain, um, not really too much different here. Um, Pulse Chain hasn't really done too much. Uh, it's kind of held at this su first support zone we were looking at. Uh, if Bitcoin hits new all-time high, then you can expect this to probably come back up here. Now, I, I would like to see in the next one month, um, Pulse Chain go towards its previous all-time high. That, well, as soon as it came out back in May of 23, uh, can it get back to that area, consolidate a bit, go to new all-time highs, consolidate a bit more, and then maybe from June, July, August, somewhere in there, it really starts to run into from Q, let's say late Q2 into Q4. Um so yeah, right now, if Bitcoin does make a new all-time high uh, and continues into that mid to late April, this is probably the last time you see uh, Pulse Chain as cheap as it is right now, right? This dip right here might be your last best chance to buy Pulse Chain relatively cheap. Again, if it comes back again after making a new all-time high, it likely comes back a little higher, right? Doesn't mean it's going to be significantly better than uh, right now's price but it will be higher most likely. So right now, very, very good time to buy some Pulse Chain, in my opinion. Also, even better time to buy some Pulse X. So things are looking pretty good uh, among those two. Now, let's jump into a little bit about what, what's happening other than just price in the market. Things are looking very, very good here. Um, but Kieran Warwick, right, talking about Alluvium. I suggest um, following him on Twitter. If you have bought any Alluvium, then you, it's kind of mandatory to some regard. Um, and there's still only 46,000 people following uh, him and the Alluvium project. So looks pretty good. Um, but he has a thread here from September of 22, basically at the bottom of the bear market saying what they plan to do with Alluvium for the next 20 years, right? So the founders are locked in long-term. We can build on the next frontier of gaming and generate mainstream crypto adoption, something we are passionate about. He goes into depth about that. So I highly recommend if you are invested or if you're interested uh, in buying into Illuvium, you know, read this, not necessarily before buying, but read it at some point. Um, and we will have on both Dollar Cost Crypto and my channel, um, we'll have an edited version of the webinar where Kieran Warwick came uh, and visited uh, the Moon Gang um, for the 20, Q1 2024 Crypto Mindset course. We'll have uh, a edited version of that coming out on both of our YouTube channels, maybe later this week, something like that. We got to cut it up a little bit first, but so uh, they have some Q2 updates here happening at, well, in about uh, 11 hours, right? So 11 hours from now, um, there'll be a nice Q2 update here that might have a nice effect on price, might not, I don't know, but I would suggest if you're interested listening to that, I might actually wake up early for once uh, just to listen to that. Um, the Aussies down there on the other side, uh, right? And just uh, choosing the best times ever. 
but actually it's in line with when the American market wakes up and price starts pumping. So um, smart move, right? But yeah, I, I would uh, recommend kind of just taking a look here through uh, Kieran's information because there's some good stuff here. Like there's one metric that is held through multiple cycles. Followers might have grown disproportionately in the past one week. Hold the line bounces incoming and so far price has gone higher, right? So um, is very um, transparent with the information that he gives. So definitely give him a follow there on Twitter. Um, also, what else is going on in the market? BlackRock says Bitcoin will be a good portfolio diversifier despite its recent rally with stocks. So even though it is somewhat correlated with stocks, it is not one for one correlated, right? Or uh, not directly correlated with stocks. Um, and then also, this is kind of funny, right? Um, it will be a good portfolio for portfolio diversifier because the you know mad gains right basically um price go up like crazy and so yeah your stocks might rally but percentage wise they ain't gonna do shit compared to bitcoin so um you know they're trying to basically give good narratives for um boomers and uh some gen xers uh, to start getting in on the bitcoin etf um and yeah they are correct uh on that and uh no i will not make a free account for cnbc um <laughs> Also, I, I'm not following Token Terminal. That's that's blasphemy. Um, very good data here from Token Terminal saying uh, that crypto is doing just fine here because uh, since its inception, Uniswap has facilitated trades of over $1.8 trillion. Uh, the uh, DEX recently surpassed uh, the 200,000 daily active user mark. Um, what might its daily active user figure look like during a bull market peak? Um, good question, right? So, uh, yeah, Uniswap users basically going up and to the right despite Ethereum fees. This is very, very bullish and just, you know, showing partially what we already know in the market, but giving you solid data to back it up. Now, this is interesting. Um, Solana with two 20 billion volume peaks in a row. So uh, all the Solana, a lot of the Solana DEXs, if you aggregate all of them together, right? Um, They're getting a lot of volume as well. I think Uniswap obviously getting way more um, in terms of money and people. Uh, but here in terms of dollar volume, right, we see Radium, the purple line in the middle, uh, take over in front of Orca um, recently uh, as the main two DEXs here on the Solana ecosystem. So um, $40 billion within two days um, is a new uh, record here for the Solana DEXs. So um, they're starting to actually gain traction, which is good to see. And uh, also talking about um, our layer ones gaining traction, Phantom here. If you want to go and read their announcement on the Sonic um, virtual machine launch uh, and everything here. Um, so Michael Kong unveils Sonic's launch and beyond. It's only a three minute read. I'll throw this in the chat for you guys who want to listen to it or read it. Um, you can all, I usually just have the, the browser read it to me um, while I'm doing other stuff. Um, but hey, you know, you can do what you want, but just reading the first paragraph on December 27th, 2019, the first version of the Opera Network was released based on concepts that Andre Krohn had carefully studied, including concurrent knowledge, uh, common knowledge, uh, land port time steps and others. It was an amazing achievement by Andre and the technical team, the first permissionless DAG based protocol that significantly improved scalability and time to finality. Opera achieved maximum, maximum tra uh, transaction per second, approaching 200 and time to finality sub 600 milliseconds, far more than Ethereum's transa 12 transactions per second and uh, up to 60 second finality at the time uh, or over, right? So yeah, uh, obviously uh, a lot of good stuff is coming here from Phantom. So they look forward to sharing more details in the coming weeks, but these are basically uh, the things that um, they're uh, building at with Sonic, um, including you know their FVM. Um, so yeah, things are going to be getting pretty, pretty nice here for Phantom. If we do take a look quickly at Phantom, getting some resistance here at about $1.20. Still on a buy signal on the weekly, no problem. What about on the monthly? Monthly still on a buy, no problem. Daily, daily kind of just chilling but yeah let's go back to the weekly here yeah i think it pauses for a bit and then continues basically you have a one two 
Now we have one, two, three. Maybe there's a fourth wave happening at the moment and then fifth coming. So yeah, I think it has another leg up. Um, this is trying to basically get to about a dollar sixty or so before it kind of uh, chops sideways for a while. So yeah, seeing this come up between a dollar sixty to two dollars over the next one month, I wouldn't be surprised about a two X, probably very similar to a lot of coins in the market. Um, so for anybody who said they made ten thousand dollars so far in Phantom, you're about to make twenty. Um, nice. Uh, keep holding. So that's our news there with Sonic. Um, good stuff. Uh, Singapore's Dig, uh, DigiFT launches UST bill uh, real world asset tokens. Uh, so the RWA uh, real world asset narrative is starting to take hold a little bit um, in the crypto space. You start seeing people talk about it, wanting to pump the next um, kind of section of coins. But this is interesting from Singapore because the Digi, uh, DigiFT a Singapore licensed entity launched tokens that represent a direct claim on U.S. Treasury bill receipts. The market capitalization for real world assets grew 15% in the last 24 hours to $6.5 billion. Uh, so it's just the start, essentially, of this narrative of uh, real world asset tokens. I think this bull market, you find some good ones and some bullshit ones, uh, similar to the AI narrative, where there's a very few good ones and a lot of shitty ones, um, and not all of them are necessarily made to make you a lot of money. Um, we won't really see the uh, best of the RWAs until the next bull market where we get like Tesla stock, right, uh, or Microsoft or uh, any company, Google, whatever, um, putting their stock uh, crypto, crypto, what tokenized is the best way to put it. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see kind of how that goes. But this is the beginning of this trend finally starting to take hold. Uh, this is also very, very interesting, but Google now shows Ethereum name service wallet balances in search results, right? So uh, how do they do that? The data is being provided from Etherscan. So yeah, the fact that you can Google uh, ENS, ENS wallet balances um, just through Google search is extra bullish. Just another thing you can do here in crypto. Um, then to the FUD. Right, the SEC plans to ask judge for $2 billion in fines and penalties from Ripple Labs, right? So the filing which Ripple Chief uh, Legal Officer Stuart L. L. Detroit uh, said will be made public on Tuesday continues the company's year-long case with the SEC. So the SEC is trying to throw as many things at crypto projects as possible to slow them down. This, in my opinion, is, you know, if they can get uh some of the rip ripple was basically judged to be uh, a non-security right and so they're going to try to uh trip up ripple um to also try to trip up ethereum to be labeled as a security right so that's what this is all about um and ripple's actually fighting the good fight for everybody else in crypto and ethereum itself so um yeah you got to kind of respect uh ripple a bit in, in what they're doing here um so yeah and last but not least, the Philippines uh, regulators take steps to block Binance. So probably because uh, Binance isn't being friendly with the U.S. government uh, or, you know, uh, the DOJ is suing or is going after CZ, right? Some countries like the Philippines just want nothing to do with it. Um, so, yeah, the more that we have this type of FUD coming out in the market means we are still early enough in the cycle to make mad gains. But... Uh, let's take a look at where Bitcoin's at now. Seventy thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars uh, sitting pretty here on the daily, so everything's looking fine um, for Bitcoin. And again, if you want to jump in and learn more from your fellow Moon Gangers, um, add your research in there and see what other people think. Come over here to the Citadel and uh, jump in for ninety-eight dollars a month plus discounts on future crypto mindset courses and um, plenty of. We did invite this group to the Kieran Warwick webinar uh, live. So if, uh, anybody who caught that was able to jump in and uh, basically ask questions, listen to Kieran Warwick uh, during that webinar. Um, also, we have um, private voice chats in here from time to time. And whenever we see the market moving, the Citadel and the current uh, crypto mindset course, in this case, Q1, are the two places we go um, to basically sound the alarms first. So jump in here into the Citadel and, uh, you know, no more poor. Um, so let's see here. Where is the chat? There we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Boom, 
Benito Pepperini, <laughs> 1399 Canadian, says, "Will Alluvium reach three thousand dollars USD this cycle?" I would. I, I if I'm a betting man, I bet yes. Um, but um, not everybody thinks so. But very very uh, good number. Got Wade Emery saying, "Good stuff. Appreciate you, man. Hope you're well." Um, Yes, the Citadel, Citadelphia, a place, a warm place, a place where the beer flows like wine, where beautiful women instinctively flock like the salmon of Capistrano, a little place called Citadelphia. I like it. <laughs> it's got to be, got to be the tagline for sure, right? Um, to get over six hundred. So, um, Crimson Matt knows what's up. He says, "No more poor." Perfect. So, um, I don't know about that one, Adrian. So I'm not sure. Um, Let's see. Was there any other stuff that I missed here? Uh, where was it? Where I think I just saw one that I wanted to share. Jet changed on me. Oh, yeah. Franklin here saying, um, boys in here can't really lose. Yeah. Uh, as long as you're paying attention, managing your risk. Uh, I agree. Um, Good. All right. So let's maybe end today's stream with a couple memes just for the hell of it. Um, <laughs> no worries. Uh, all right. Yeah. Oh, there was one. Where was that? Uh, this one here. Yeah. Flynn Rider is correct here. We're pretty much buying high, selling higher. Um, boom. There we go. So let's put a couple memes here. Uh, Blacklid Blocks Pet says, do you think someone will one day make a satellite to be an ETH and Bitcoin node and receive transactions to submit to the blockchain? That way we don't even need the internet, sir. This already exists. Yes. So the answer is yes. Um, the guy who may or may not be Satoshi Nakamoto, Adam Back, created a company called Blockstream, um, which essentially does exactly this um, with satellites uh, specifically sent up into space um, as Bitcoin nodes. So that way, if you have a laptop and a satellite dish, um, wherever you are in the world, um, you will be able to mine Bitcoin or at least check the Bitcoin blockchain and submit transactions, um, you know, basically, um, you know, regardless of the internet. So that already exists. I, um, so yeah, uh-oh. Uh-oh, top signal. No, I'm joking. Uh, we got the east-west connection out here. Um, Victor saying, hey, Charlie, I'm 73% vested in Ethereum at the moment. Other 27%, including um, Phantom Solana, say, and ILB and some Pulse Chain. Do you think it's wise to move more ETH into Solana? I feel like it's too safe at the moment. Um, if you feel like it's uh, too safe, meaning that maybe uh, Solana is kind of high compared to Ethereum, you can wait the ETH to Solana chart. Um, if it does get a pullback, will probably be uh, somewhat short term. I think Solana outpaces ETH the majority of the bull market. So is it safe or wise to move ETH into Solana? It's, I would say sure. Um, right now, the time for uh, moving Bitcoin into Ethereum for sure. And I think, you know, starting to dollar cost average your Ethereum into Solana is not a bad move. Um, don't need to do all of that 73%. I'd keep at least 33% of that in Ethereum. So take 40% out of Ethereum, maybe put that in Solana or um put like 20% of it in Solana and then sprinkle the other 20% among other things. And probably it sounds like you probably need more pulse X. Um, just a friendly word there. Um, so good, good. Um, where are we going? Um, I haven't seen him in the chat since the last bull market. Um, so where, where's I going? Oh yeah. I was going to test out one thing first. Is Twitter still fucking up. That's the question. No, this can't be true. Nope, it's not true. It looked like it was going to work for a second, but Twitter's still fucking up on video. So it is what it is. Um, so in terms of the end of the memes, then we just got to got to come out with one of these. So um, we'll be back here at our normal bat time at 2.30 p.m. Pacific um, and uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So until then, guys, peace, live long and prosper. Have a good rest of your evening and uh, keep buying. Uh, Hashtag not live or financial advice, but uh, I would think you will do well. So anywho, uh, we will see you guys on the next one. So I was right.
I took a rash of shit for two years, but I was right, and everyone was wrong. And yeah, I got a bonus check for it. Sue me. You know? It's a lot of money. I get it. I can feel you judging me. That's palpable. But hey, I never said I was the hero of this story. I said, well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right? There's no second best, okay? But take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin, then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on